In this video, we delve into the strategic brilliance of chess legend Anatoly Karpov. We'll be looking at four remarkable games where Karpov, using the solid yet deceptively aggressive Karo Khan defense, outwitted his adversaries. Prepare yourselves as we uncover the secrets behind Karpov's iconic style and gain deeper insights into the rich complexities of the Karo Khan defense. In the first game, Karpov takes on the strong grandmaster, Esan Marami. It starts e4 before Karpov initiates the Karo Khan defense with c6, tempting white into snatching the center with d4. Then d5 challenges the center. The Karo Khan defense is a solid choice against white's e4, leading to good endgames for black with a generally better pawn structure. White exchanges pawns on d5 before unleashing the Panov Botvinnik attack with c4. Although white will probably end up with an isolated d pawn, he'll usually have an active position. Karpov supports the pawn while developing his knight. White continues to pressure the center with his own knight, playing knight c3, prompting black to play e6. Knight f3 is followed by bishop b4, pinning the knight and preparing to castle. Next, if white were to develop the light squared bishop, then black would just take on c4 and white would waste the tempo by recapturing. So first, white captures on d5. Karpov recaptures with the knight to avoid having an isolated pawn of his own. This also adds an attacker to the pinned knight, so white plays queen c2 to defend. Black continues knight c6, white plays h3, and black decides to take on c3 with his knight. Now, white could take the bishop, but then black would retreat the knight, and white's pawn structure would be shambolic. So white recaptures with the pawn. Karpov keeps the bishop on the diagonal and is now threatening to take the pawn on d4 exploiting the pin. White actually allows this, playing bishop d3. The reason he does this is after black takes the pawn, white can exchange knights, and after black recaptures, he can play bishop b5 check. Black blocks with bishop d7, then white castles, unpinning the pawn, recreating the threat on the queen. The queen has to leave the d-file because of the incoming rook d1, so plays queen e5. Then bishop takes d7, forces black's king to go uncastled. Even though Karpov is up a pawn, he must be cautious because his king is stuck in the center. White plays queen a4 check and meets king e7 with rook b1 attacking the b-pawn. Black chooses b6 to save the pawn. Rook b5 comes next, hitting the queen. Black should avoid taking the c-pawn because it would enable bishop b2 with tempo followed by bishop takes g7 and a menacing attack on the black king. Black decides to park the bus playing queen c7. Here white should keep the momentum going playing something like bishop f4 attacking the queen. He instead plays queen g4 hitting the g7-pawn but Karpov can retreat his king to safety while defending the pawn. C4 is followed by H5 attacking the queen and paving the way for a rook lift. Queen F3 attacks the other rook, so black plays rook C8, building up pressure on the weak C pawn. White develops the bishop to B2, and black could take the C pawn but chooses a safe approach, tucking the king away on G8. Rook D8 puts the rook on the open file, and Karpov lifts the rook to H6. White plays the tricky c5, and taking the pawn would be a big mistake because of rook b7, and that's going to win some material. Karpov, cool as a cucumber, first plays a6, forcing the rook back before taking on c5 with his queen, and he is now up two pawns. White plays g3, giving his king some air. This prompts black to break down the king side with h4. Now that the back rank checkmate tactics are supposedly off the table, white plays rook c1 hitting the queen. But this was a horrendous blunder. Can you find how black wins? The move Karpov plays is queen takes c1. White recaptures and black takes again with his rook. I guess white thought his king had an escape square, but unfortunately he missed the glamorous finish h3 checkmate. This goes to show that even the best of the best can make monumental mistakes. The next challenger is Grandmaster Vasily Yemelin. Just like the last opponent, white chooses to exchange pawns on d5 before unleashing the Panov Botvinnik attack. Karpov develops the knight and white does the same. After e6, black chooses c5. Although this gains space on the queen side, it does alleviate some of the pressure off of black's center. Karpov continues bishop e7, preparing to castle, and white plays knight f3. Black castles, then white activates the queen on c2. Black targets the advanced c-pawn with b6. 
inducing white to play b4 to support it. a4 relentlessly challenges the pawn chain, and of course a3 wouldn't be possible because of the pin on the pawn to the rook. White plays knight a4 with an attack on b6. Black takes on b4 and white captures the pawn on b6 hitting the rook. Rook a7 gets out of danger. White presses forward with knight e5 and Karpov immediately challenges both of white's dominance knights by playing knight d7. White captures it with the b knight and black must be careful. Recapturing with the knight relinquishes control of c6 which would allow knight c6 forking the queen and rook. So black recaptures with the bishop. White's bishop d3 creates a battery towards the king's side threatening h7. Black plays h6 evading the attack, then white plays bishop d2 attacking b4. Karpov cleverly attacks the knight with bishop f6. If white were to take on b4, then Karpov would take the knight, severely weakening the c5 pawn and creating a passed pawn of his own. This would be better for black after a move like knight c6 and if bishop c3, d4 winning the e5 pawn. Back to the game, so white plays f4 solidifying his knight's position. Black plays knight c6 increasing the pressure on the knight and attacking the d4 pawn. White chooses to capture the knight and black recaptures. Then white defends the pawn with his queen. Karpov continues queen a5 planning to meet bishop takes b4 with rook b8 pinning the bishop to the queen. Now castling here for white is surprisingly a blunder. White would play queen a3 hitting the queen and the bishop, and if the queen were to move to defend the bishop, then bishop d4 would be a double attack on both the rook and the king. So white would be forced to capture the queen, leading to rook takes a3 hitting the bishop and still threatening bishop takes d4 with the fork. White cannot defend both threats. Back to the game, with this variation in mind, white plays king e2 connecting the rooks and defending his bishop. The way Karpov ends this game is absolutely sensational. He first takes on c5, exploiting the pin on the pawn. White's rook c1 attacks the queen and she goes to d6 pressuring the f4 pawn. But this allows white to take on b4 with a skewer. Karpov captures on f4 and his queen is awfully close to the white king. White captures the rook and black takes on d4 with a threat on the queen. Queen d2 offers a trade of queens and black plays the marvelous move, rook takes a2. This pins the queen to the king and if white were to capture, then queen f2 will win the queen. So white plays rook c2 blocking the attack. Karpov carries on with the onslaught checking on f2. King d1 is met with rook a1 check, rook c1 blocks, bishop a4 check, Bishop c2 blocks. White is in dire straits. Black captures on c1. White cannot take with the king because of the pin, so he takes with the queen. And black takes on g2 hitting the rook. Now white's best bet is to take the bishop, leading into an endgame where black is just up four pawns. Instead, white saves his rook and black plays queen f3 check. King d2 would lose to bishop c3 checkmate. And the other continuation, rook e2, would result in bishop b5 piling up on the pinned piece. If queen d2, then bishop c3 would just force the queen away from the defense of the rook. In light of these continuations, white resigns. The third opponent, de Grammont, is one of many challengers during a Samuel. This time white opts for the advanced variation. This enables Karpov to develop the bishop to f5. White challenges it with bishop d3, and black eliminates the light squared bishops from the board. Although white gets to develop their queen for free, after black's e3, black has firm control over the light squares and has gotten rid of what would have been his bad bishop. White continues their development with knight f3, and black challenges the center with c5. White maintains the tension with c3, and black's knight c6 increases the pressure. A3 is a common idea for white in these types of pawn structures, planning to play b4 and potentially b2, bishop b2 to secure his central pawns. Black puts an immediate stop to that with c4. White retreats the queen and black develops the other knight to e7. White plays bishop g5 pinning the knight. This entices Karpov to play h6 and after bishop h4, he continues the kingside expansion with g5. 
Bishop g3 is followed by knight f5, placing the knight on a powerful post. White develops his last minor piece before black invigorates his kingside pawn storm with h5. The threat is to trap the bishop, so white plays h4. g4 forces the miserable knight g1. Karpov follows with bishop e7, and h4 is actually impossible to defend. White plays knight e2. Black wins the pawn, then white exchanges bishops, resulting in black's knight attacking the g2 pawn. White plays g3, attacking the knight, so it returns to f5. Castling kingside would flirt with disaster, so white castles queenside. Black plays queen g5, planning to do the same, while also activating his queen. King b1 gets out of the pin, and black castles long. White then plays the unusual, but not bad move, b3. If black takes, then white would activate his knight, so what Karpov instead plays b4 to secure his pawn. White takes on c4 and black recaptures, opening up the b-file. White immediately shifts the king over, paving the way for his rook. Black takes inspiration, playing king c7, also making way for one of his rooks. Both players' rooks briskly battle for the b-file. White exchanges rooks and after black recaptures, he brings the other rook over. Karpov plays h4, shifting the attention to the king's side. This pawn will start rolling, so white removes it from the board. The queen recaptures with an attack on f2, and it's quite difficult for black to defend the pawn. Rook f1 would be possible, but it puts white in an incredibly passive position. Instead, they play knight f1, and maybe the idea was to maneuver the knight to g3, yet this does nothing to defend f2, and Karpov snatches the pawn, placing white between a rock and a hard place. The threat now is to take on b1, and either way white recaptures, one of the knights is going to be hanging. White cannot even save the knights because wherever they go, one of them is going to be hanging. And if, it, that, if knight d2, then that just blocks the defense of the other knight. It is impossible for white not to lose material. They play rook takes b8. Karpov recaptures with the knight, and black, recognizing that he's backed himself into a corner, throws in the towel and resigns. The final opponent is Grandmaster Igor Alexander Natav. He chooses the advanced variation, enabling Karpov to develop his bishop to f5. Knight c3 is followed by a3, keeping an eye on b5 in case black ever pushes the c-pawn. White develops the bishop to d3, and black plays e6, opening up squares for his kingside minor pieces. b4 is an aggressive approach by white, storming the kingside. Black's bishop is forced back to g6. White develops the knight to e2, and Karpov, feeling cramped, plays f6, trying to break free. White decides to capture, and black recaptures with the pawn, preparing an e5 pawn break. White plays queen d2 with ideas of castle and queenside, and black continues his development with knight d7. h4 presses on with the pawn storm. Bishop d6 is followed by h5, pushing the bishop back to f7. White's decision to play f4 suggests he's leaving everything on the field in his fight against black. Karpov calmly proceeds with knight e7. White's knight c1 aims to maneuver the knight to a more active square. Rook g1 hits the g4 pawn, so bishop e2 is played to defend it. Then the e5 pawn break is black's attempt to free himself from white's stranglehold. White maintains the tension, playing knight b3, eyeing up some weak dark squares on the queen side. This allows Karpov to take control of the game. He captures on d4, luring the bishop to a vulnerable square. c5 immediately attacks the bishop, while dominating the center with his pawns. The bishop retreats, and d4 looks like it forks two pieces, but that pawn is pinned to the bishop. Instead, f5 is played, trying to reduce the power of white's domineering kingside pawns. White ignores this, castling queenside. Karpov shouldn't take the g-pawn because bishop d3 would be the reply and defending the h-pawn becomes a burden. Pushing it would result in bishop g6 and then defending the d-pawn becomes difficult and so on. He plays queen c7 and meets pawn takes f5 with queenside castling. After white plays bishop f3, pandemonium breaks loose, so pay close attention or else you might miss something. Karpov captures on f5, putting the knight on an active square. Then white takes the d5 pawn. Black takes the bishop on e3, attacking the rook, but leaving his own bishop up for grabs, which white captures. 
Then black takes on f4, threading a pin of the queen onto the king after the knight moves. White plays knight e2, attacking the bishop. Karpov catapults the rook to the seventh rank, and with the knight pin, the threat to move the knight, creating a pin on the queen to the king, is reestablished. So white plays rook g1 to dislodge the rook. Then black plays knight f8, opening a discovered attack on the queen, and this is devastating. Material is even right now, but this bishop is hanging, and if the queen moves, then there are some brutal discovered check opportunities for black. White decides to just take the rook on g2. White recaptures with the knight, opening up the pin on the queen, so white takes the bishop on f4 with his knight. Karpov finally takes the white queen, and white recaptures with the knight. After black takes the knight on f4, white resigns. If we count the pieces, black has a queen for a rook, which means he's completely winning. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.